working on chapter 15, we are looking at different things that affect the rate of a reaction. Well, we've already kind of seen that there are several factors that make a big difference in the rate of reaction. For instance, the temperature. So if we were looking at our uh, picture here, you know, the fact we're heating that, that makes a big difference. The concentration makes a big difference. So the concentration of the air around our chemical uh, or the fact that we've spread out our steel wool here, uh, that would make a big difference. And the other thing is if we can add a catalyst to a reaction. So those are different factors, but what we want to focus on right now is concentration. Now concentration is very important uh, in such that we can go back and do some calculations to figure things out about the concentration. And because we can control concentrations pretty well, we can use changes in concentrations to tell us about what's going on step by step on the molecular level. So we are going to uh, look at the idea that concentration does speed up a reaction. We want to do something called the method of initial rates in order to come up with a rate law. And the rate law is going to be using, we're going to introduce this idea of orders of reactions. Now also in this rate law, there's going to be a little constant K, and we'll calculate that. Now just in a uh, quick reaction here, we can see that if we have concentrated sulfuric acid versus dilute sulfuric acid and put them into some sugar, sucrose, that the concentrated, you know, does a big reaction while the dilute stuff is just sitting around. And even after a few minutes, the dilute's sitting around, but that concentrated sulfuric acid really made a big difference. So we can see that concentration is a factor that makes a big difference in uh, chemical reactions. And we have other reactions we've seen like that, where in the class, if we use 3% peroxide, okay, one thing happens. Uh, we've done some demonstrations where we use 30% peroxide, and much more exciting things happen. Now, if we have a chemical reaction, let's say we have just a really generalized chemical reaction, then what we want to do is come up with something called the rate law. And the rate law is going to have a really standard look to it. And all you have to do, you don't have to even understand anything to write the basic portion of the rate law. You just say rate equals K and K is called the uh, specific rate constant, concentration of A raised to some power, concentration of B raised to some power. So our job here is to calculate what is this little X, determine that, what is this little Y, and what is this K. Those are our big ideas in this. And the X and the Y, these are called the orders of the reaction. So if we find out, let's say later, that this is a 1 for X, we would say that this reaction is first order with respect to A. And to say that this came out to be 2, we'd say it's second order with respect to B, and we would say that it's third order overall, and we just add those little orders together. The orders, a lot of times, will be uh, could be 0, could be 1, could be 2. Those are the most common. Uh, you can find a half order, and there are situations where it could even be a negative order, which kind of means if you increase that concentration of that chemical, it actually slows down the reaction. <clears throat> but the idea here is we're saying that if you increase the concentration, and concentration here in brackets means moles per liter, concentration, then that speeds up the rate. So if I were to double this, I would expect the rate to get larger. If I were to triple my chemical, I expect the rate to get larger. And so here we're just seeing that it doesn't all happen uh, perfectly proportional, uh, that the, you know, it could be a 1 or it could be a 2, could be a 0 on here. And that you know, tells us about what's going on step by step in the chemical reactions. So anytime we see a, an equation, we can get started by writing the rate law. And again, rate equals K times concentration, concentration, as many concentrations as we need. Now, later on, we may find that C and D also might get involved, but that's kind of weird stuff. So our first step would just be just the reactants raised to some power. Now, in order to do this kind of reaction, we're going to use what we call the method of initial rates. So we're saying if we had some hydrogen and chlorine, first off, 
let's write the rate law, the basic rate law. So we're going to say rate equals K, concentration, in this case, of hydrogen gas raised to some power, concentration of chlorine gas raised to some power. And we have to go back and figure out those three numbers. Now, by doing this, we would use this kind of a chart, and it's a very common thing to see, where somebody does some reactions, and what they do, they put in initial concentrations of your chemicals and see what the rate is. Now, in this case, the rate might be, okay, hydrochloric acid in moles per liter per second. Moles per liter per second. So how many moles per liter, how much does the concentration of HCl increase in moles per liter every second? Now, if you see these numbers, we're going to be looking for things like this. Here's two, uh, these two experiments where the Cl has not changed, concentration of Cl has not changed, uh, but the hydrogen has doubled. Okay? Now, when that doubles, what has happened to the rate? And we can kind of see, it's a little tricky, but 1.8, 3.64, that this is double this first one. So if we double the concentration and we double the rate, that tells us something. And if we look for another situation where, say, these two have not changed, and if we compare these two, we can see that they've doubled, and we can see that this is also doubled. So that's the kind of information we're looking for. We start off with a chart. Let me clean this up a little bit. We start off with a, a reaction and a chart, and we find uh, uh, situations where one chemical stays the same and the other chemical changes. So any change in the rate must be due to the chemical that changes. So that tells us about our exponent there. And then we do the same thing with another situation where that hasn't changed, but that has. So again, any change in the rate must be due to this chemical, and that will tell us about this guy. So let's go ahead and just do a real problem. So here we have a reaction, 2NO plus 2H2 turns into N2 plus 2H2O, and it was studied at 904 degrees Celsius. Now it turns out that that is really not useful information. It's just proper to say that because it'll be different rates at different temperatures, so you'll see that temperature in there a lot. We're not going to use it yet. So what happens here, we say, well, let's start with our rate law. So our basic rate law is rate equals K, concentration of NO to the X power, concentration of H2 to the Y power. Now, we want to find X and Y first, and then we're going to go back and calculate K. For this reaction, there's a 2 in front of this and a 2 in front of that, and that makes absolutely no difference, because we're going to find out that X and Y depend on the slowest step in our step-by-step -step mechanism for this reaction, and the 2's deal with the overall reaction, so we cannot use those numbers uh, for X and Y. They may come out to be 2 and 2, and that's okay, but never these numbers never get used uh, for your orders. So we're going to look at this reaction. We say we want a situation where one chemical does not change, and the other one does, and we can see what happens is if we look at 2 and going to 1, that 1 is double 2, so we've doubled the concentration of NO, and what has happened to our rate? Well, if we take 1 point, point 0.136 divided by 0 0.0399, I believe that is going to be four times. I'm going to stop the thing and check. Okay, I just double-checked, and so this is four times. So what that tells me is if I double the concentration of NO, my rate hasn't doubled, it's actually quadrupled. So that means this number right here must be a 2. That X must be 2. So I'd say that this reaction is second order with respect to NO. Because when I double this concentration, that quadrupled my rate. So there must be a, a squared up there. Now to figure out the other one, let's change colors. Here we have a situation where these two are not changing. Okay, but this is doubling. Now when that doubles, we can kind of see pretty easily that the rate has doubled. 0 0.0339 would go into 0 0.0678 two times. 
So that means if I double the concentration of hydrogen, that has doubled my rate, so this number must be a 1. So I'm going to go back and rewrite my rate law here. And I'm going to say rate equals K times the concentration of NO to the second power, concentration of hydrogen to the first power. And I wouldn't have to write that, num that 1 in there. So this is basically part of my rate law. Second order for NO, the chemical, the reaction is first order with respect to H2, and it would be third order overall. Now the last step here then is going to go back and figure out what my value of K, and that's just algebra. So I'm just going to solve for K. So K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of NO squared and the concentration of H2 to the first power. Now, we're given a rate over here, and we have our concentration, so we can pick any one of these three experiments because K is a constant, so it really ought to come out to be exactly the same number. When we're really doing reactions for this, they may not be exactly the same number, but they're going to be pretty close. So I'm going to take a second and fill in my values. Okay, I've written my values over here on the side, and what I have is I have my rate. I'm just using my first experiment. So the rate, I put in 0.136 moles per liter per second, and for my concentrations, I had 0 0.420, and I squared it because of my 2 here, and I have 0 0.122, and that's just to the first power, and each of those was moles per liter, so since I have three of them, it's moles cubed per liters to the minus cubed. Now, I'm going to take a second and calculate that front value, but let's look at the units really quickly. If I have moles divided by moles cubed, that's going to give me moles to the minus 2. If I have liters to the minus 1 divided by liters to the minus 3, that's going to give me liters squared and then a seconds to the minus 1. The seconds always stays the same. So my units I'm going to actually use for this will be liters squared, moles to the minus 2, seconds to the minus 1. And those are kind of strange units, but get used to doing that because on a problem like this, that's usually worth one point just to come up with the units for the value of k. Now, Ks usually have terrible units because they have to cancel out everything else in the problem. I'm going to take a second and calculate the value for K. Okay, I get a value of 6.31946, so I'm going to call that 6.32. And, that's again, that's liter squared, moles to the minus 2 seconds to the minus 1. So this is a very, very, very messy page, but if somebody said write the rate law, then I would write this guy here. So rate equals K, NO to the first order, uh, to the first power, and H2, I'm sorry, NO to the second power, H2 to the first power, and the value of K, by calculating, I got 6.32 times, no, just 6.32 liters squared moles to the minus 2 seconds to the minus 1. And we're going to find out that those units are always true if you have a, a third power overall. And getting used to those units might be a useful thing to do. Whew. Let's try another problem. Okay, something a little simpler looking. Okay, so I have two NOs and two H2s. So I'm going to write my rate law just to get started. Concentration of NO, and I'm going to make it to the X power. Concentration of H2, okay, to the Y power. Now, in this case, we can kind of look and say, okay, here we have an easy one. Those are the same. Okay, this has doubled, and this has doubled. So I can just do by inspection, I can say, okay, if my concentration of H2 has doubled, and the uh, rate has doubled, then y must be 1. So I already know that this is going to be to the first order. Now in this case here, for my second one, I don't have a situation where only one thing changes. So let's say I just take these two, 
okay, well, everything is changing, and that's a little more complicated. So we're going to do a mathematical way of doing this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and let's say take experiment 3 and experiment 2, and I'm just going to divide those two. So here's what happens. I'm going to take the rate, okay, for 3 and 2, and use my value. So I'm going to say 1.20 equals K times the concentration of NO, so 0 0.015, and that is to the X power times my hydrogen, which is 0 0.040, and that's to the first power, because I already know that. So that's my whole rate equation, my rate law, for step two, and I'm going to divide by my rate law for step three. So my rate is 1.20 again equals K. This time my NO concentration is 0 0.030 to the X power, and I have 0 0.010 to the first power. Now, by taking these two equations, the rate law 2 and rate law 3, and just putting them over each other, one thing that's nice is I can see that my k drops out. Okay, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and I'm going to see, I'm going to change colors. So 1.20 divided by 1.20, that equals 1. I have 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.03, that's 0 0.5 to the x power. So something algebraically, if I have a number to the x power divided by a number to the x power, that's equal to this number divided by this number to the x power, so 0.5. And the same thing here, I have 0 0.04 to the first power divided by 0 0.01 to the first power, so that's the same thing as 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.01 to the first power, which we can see is going to be 4. So my equation here is, if I have... 1 equals 0 0.5 to the x power times 4. So I'm going to solve. I'm going to say 1 over 4. I'm going to do it up here. Divide both sides by 4. So that drops out. So 1 quarter is equal to 0 0.5 to the x power. So I can see what happens is this must be 1 half squared, because I know that that's what equals uh, one quarter. So by doing this, I can see that this is a two. So my rate law, I know that the x has a value of two, y has a value of one. Now you can see that this is exactly the same actual problem I had before. Okay, I have NO, I have H2, it took that to be two to one, but I'm doing a mathematical way of doing this, and you'll see that in your book, but I wanted to do one for you. So you just take two different rate laws and just put all the values one over the other, and that's the part that's kind of confusing, and then pull these, uh, these numbers together and then solve for x. So in any kind of problem like this, there's usually one number that you can get just by looking at it, and then the second one you might have to do mathematically. That's all for today.